What's up, y'all? I just got my Keychron in the mail a couple days ago. I didn't get the chance to open it just yet until now, so I am excited. Um, one thing that sucks about this keyboard's uh, delivery process is that it got smashed, I guess? It's like a fat dent right there on the keyboard, which sucks, but I'm excited. I hear great things about this keyboard. Uh, let me pull up the specifications. Oh, so I did get the bare bones version. I did not get the fully assembled version because I'm gonna be putting my own switches onto the keyboard. So it doesn't come with switches and it doesn't come with keycaps. So this is $150. If you want the fully assembled version, it's only $20 more. So I kind of think it's pretty worth it to get the fully assembled one if you don't really want to put your custom switches on it. But anyways, uh, here's the packaging. Um, it's looking pretty, pretty neat. Here's Keychron reminding us to make sure your switches are straight when you put them in. And it tells us to please be gentle when putting the switches in. Thanks, Keychron. Uh, manual, won't be needing that. Whoa, this is pretty nice. It comes with a, a braided cable with one of these, like, whatever this pin is called. You see, like, fancy keyboards use this. Uh, pen. And on the other side, there is USB-C. But Keychron also gives you an extra little adapter for a regular USB type A port. I'm actually very surprised. It comes with one of these braided um, black cables. So that is very nice. I will actually plug this in right now. And then I'm just gonna screw that in. Nice. Now I am an enthusiast keyboardist, I guess. Let's move on to the other stuff that comes with this keyboard. Uh, we got some screws, I guess, for the stabilizer. Oh, sh I need to buy stabilizers. I still don't have that. Here's a keyboard. It's nice and hefty. The bare bones version comes with an aluminum plate, but the shell itself is already really heavy. So it feels nice and, and weighted. Yeah, so I'm looking at the website right now and it says you do get a premium coiled Type-C cable. Was not expecting this, so that's cool. And the price of this, it's 150 bucks for the bare bones kit. Really, really sleek. The back of the case is cool. Oh, there's a Windows and Mac switch right here. The screws on the back side are gold, so it gives that really cool like black and yellow look. And from the reviews I've seen, the stock stabilizers I hear are pretty good. If that is lube, that is a lot of lube. It's like that white thing there for the enter key. There's like a lot of... I think that's lube. That looks really weird though. But yeah, it should be really easy to assemble. Again, for 150 bucks, you get this really nice keyboard itself. You get a braided cable, which is cool. And that's it for the bare bones kit. And for $20 more, you get switches. Um, the switches are Gateron switches. And the keycaps you would get are double shot TBT. Just kidding. Double shot ABS. I personally am going to be using alpaca switches right here. They are linear switches and I am a fan of linear switches. I think they sound really cool. And for keycaps, I'm going to use these. HK Gaming keycaps. And I bought these switches and keycaps a long time ago. This Keychron Q1 took quite a while to come. I think it's been almost one to two months since I've uh, ordered this. It came early October for me. I hope this is better than the GMMK Pro. I've been using that for a while and I'm wasn't very satisfied with that. All right, so I guess I'll just put some of the switches in right now and uh, test it out. I was told that alpacas are pre-lube. Eh, I am too lazy to lube them. So I'm just going to um, put them in. So I got the WASD keys in first. Let me get those keycaps onto the board. I was really worried that if I didn't lube them, they would sound really scratchy, but these do sound really good. Um, it sounds pretty high pitch right now because it's on like a wooden um, table. If I add a mouse pad under it, it should make it sound better. Just by touching these WASD keys, I think this might be my primary keyboard. I'm gonna cut here, um, do maybe like a time lapse on my phone, and I will continue working on this keyboard later. Several days later. 
All right, so I finished putting on a bunch of these keys on the keyboard. It's been a couple days now. There is somewhat of a problem. I don't 100% like the way this keyboard sounds. So after watching some videos about the sound of the Keychron Q1, other people had the same issue as me. It sounds really pingy because of this aluminum frame. Just tapping on the board is kind of what it sounds like. And when you hit the keys, It's not awful, but it is noticeable. So that's why I left out some of these keys here. If the pinginess really annoys me, I will probably put some foam under the board. And that's one problem with the Keychron Q1, is that it comes stock with this kind of pingy sound. If Keychron added some foam, it would be amazing. I think this keyboard would be pretty much there. The stabilizers that come with the board are pretty good. They don't rattle. And so I don't really have anything to complain about there. The board quality is great, it's working. The cable quality is awesome, it's braided. And I'm really happy that I picked alpacas. Even unlubed, I think sound pretty good on this board. The RGB is pretty cool, it's a nice touch. Um, I'm not really using translucent keycaps or anything, so you can't really see the RGB. But I left the top row open so you guys can see some of that RGB action. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Again, it's really unfortunate that it's so pingy. Um, it sounds really hollow is the thing with this much space between the the aluminum frame and everything, it's just a little too pingy. But yeah, other than that, this keyboard is definitely a keeper for me. With that, the rest of the video is just gonna be some typing tests and sound tests, so stick around for that. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna thank you guys all for watching right here, and here's some typing tests.